Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we're looking at a data set of customer behavior. Well, it's really a data set of 400 clients of a company um, with only a few features and we're going to have a, a label column at the end that says whether or not they purchased the product being offered. Um, now this is going to be a feature engineering exercise so I'm going to show how you can um, especially when you're dealing with a really small data set like this, um, you can generate some new features from the existing features that could actually improve the performance of the model. Now this does depend on the model. Uh, some models will be more receptive to this than others. In particular, we're using a linear model, which will um, definitely benefit from this kind of feature engineering. So let's go ahead and import NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. For pre-processing, we'll use the train test split function and standard scalar from sklearn and our model is logistic regression. So let's go ahead and load in the data using pandas.readcsv. We can grab the file path to the CSV file up here. Let's paste that in um, and we can take a look. So uh, we really have three features, uh, one label column, and I'm gonna drop the user ID since uh, they're not useful to us. We get a little more information with data.info uh, and there are no missing values in the data set. So let's start pre-processing, and I'll make a function called preprocess inputs. This is going to take in a data frame. Uh, it's going to make a copy of the data frame. For, for now, that's all it will do. It will return it right after that. And we get the processed version of the data down here, and we'll store it in X, um, and we will pass in data. So now this is the copy of the data frame we'll do the pre-processing on. First thing I want to do is drop the user ID column. Uh, since they are all unique identifiers and not useful uh, for our predictions. So we drop the column from axis 1, which is the column axis, and now we're left with quite a small number of features. All right, so the last, really the only thing to do for pre-processing is to um, convert male and female into 0 and 1. Uh, we just want to make sure those are the only two values in the gender column. You can see, yes, we have male and female, so we'll binary encode that. Uh, and we'll do this just by taking the column and using the replace function, where we can in input a mapping. Uh, we're going to map female to 0 and male to 1. Uh, but the order that we choose here does not matter. We could have switched these if we want. All right, and we'll send, uh, we'll send that to the original column and now we should have fully numeric data. So now we just have to split and scale the data. So let's split df into x and y, where y is going to be, um, y will be the purchased column, and x is all the rest of the data. So we'll drop the purchased column from axis 1 and store that in x. Then we'll do our train test split. Uh, so we'll send 70% of the data to the train set, and we'll get x train and y train. And, seven, and the other 30% to the test set, where we'll get x test and y test. And we'll use the train test split function from sklearn to give us those values. We pass in x and y, specify the train size we'd like, which will be 70%, 0.7. Uh, and this will also shuffle the data for us. Um, and we'll include a random state so that the shuffle can always be made in the same way. Now let's return these four sets of data. So return x train x test, y train y test, uh, and let's take a look at x train down here. Alright, so uh, this is 70% of the data and doesn't have the uh, label column here, but um, we want to scale the data now. So all three of these columns take on different ranges of values. Uh, this one is just 0 and 1, this one takes values from 18 to 60, I believe and then the estimated salaries in the thousands. So we want to uh, standardize the columns so that they all take the same range of values. There's a few ways to do this. We'll be using the standard scalar uh, from sklearn. Uh, the standard scalar will do a shift and scale to each column so that every column has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. Uh, and so we're going to fit the scalar just to the train set. We don't want to we sort of want to pretend we don't have access to the test set when we're doing the scaling, uh, when we're doing the, the pre-processing. And then we'll transform the train set and test set using the fit, like that. 
Now if we run this now you'll see it comes back as a NumPy array, so it has been scaled, but we can't see it as a data frame, so let's turn it back into a data frame afterwards, and we'll specify to keep the indices the same as they were, and the column names uh, the same as they were. Alright, there we go. So let's copy that over and do exactly the same for X test. And you can see now the data has been scaled and we're ready to train the model. So why don't we make a new uh, markdown block, say training at results, no feature engineering. So this is going to be what we get when we don't do any feature engineering. So let's just create the model that will be logistic regression. Um, and model.fit x train y train and we'll print out the results. So I'll store the result uh, as an accuracy value. And we'll get that from model.score on the test set. And then we'll print out test accuracy. Uh, we'll display it to two decimal places. No, we'll do three decimal places as a percentage and then format that with accuracy times 100 since we want to see it as a percent. And we get 80.833 percent accuracy. Okay, so now let's try it with feature engineering. Um, what I'm going to do is in our function, right before we split it, we're going to create a section called feature engineering. Um, and I'm going to give this a flag on top called feature engineering, or maybe we'll call it uh, engineer features. We'll default it to false. And in here, if engineer features equals true, then we'll create some new features. So down here, um, engineer features will be false. I run that. Did I misspell it? What's wrong? Oh, we have a problem here. Oh, I didn't write anything. Pass. Okay, there we go. Alright, now we'll do it uh, with engineer features equals true, and we'll write in here what we want to do. So uh, one way to do feature engineering, um, especially when you have continuous features like this, um, is to use quantiles to make new features about extreme cases. So what I mean is um, the model currently only understands salary as a continuous value, but it doesn't have a way of expressing maybe an ed uh, a particular uh, let's say let's say someone's in the 95 percentile for their salary. That might be useful as an additional feature. You might call it a high income feature. Uh, and that might actually add more information because with a linear model it's very hard for the, the model to capture all the information that's actually contained in the column because uh, it only has one weight for the call for each column. So let's uh, let's try this. We're going to do a high income feature. So we'll create an income threshold. And for that, we'll use the quantile function. So we're going to take, uh, I believe it's estimated salary is the name of the column. Uh, and if we look at this, it should be DF. If we look at this, let's use data though down here. Uh, if we look, use quantile on this uh, column. And let's say we want the 95 quantile, 0.95 quantile. This actually gives us the value. Um, and if anything is uh, in this in the column is greater than this, then it, we know it's in the 95.95 quantile. So let's uh, let's put this up here. Change this back to DF. So we're going to call that income threshold, and then we're going to create a new high income category uh, column that comes from the old column, but we apply a function to it, which takes a given x, which will be a given salary, um, and it's going to return one if x is greater than or equal to our income threshold and otherwise it will return zero. So let's run this. Um, if we rerun this, this should be the same. We should still get 80.833. But now if we do training and results with feature engineering. So then we grab this and down here, engineer features equals true. Uh, now we have this new high income column. If we fit a model, 
we actually get a performance increase up to uh, 81.667 from 80.83 to start. So this does work. Um, let's see if we can create some more. So the other one maybe we'd like to look at is age. So I, what I'm going to do is create a, an old age category and a young age category, I mean uh, column, where that will be uh, old age will be considered if the age is over the 0.75 quantile, and young age will be if the age is under the 0.25 quantile. So let's create two new thresholds then. We'll call old age threshold. Uh, and that will come from the age column, the quantile function, for 0.75. And our young age threshold will come from the quantile function with 0.25. All right, and then we'll create the new, um, new columns. I'll do it in order. So we'll create an old age column. And that will come from the original age column with a function applied. Uh, mapping a given age, x, to 1, if x is greater than or equal to the old age threshold, and otherwise 0. So let's see how this goes. We now, uh, this will be the same, but over here we now, oh, we have a problem. Oh, I misspoke quantile. Uh, where is it? All right, uh, we now have this new column and you can see our accuracy has gone up to 84%. So we're actually making quite a, a difference by adding these features. So the last one I'm gonna add is the young age, which really just copy this one over. It's the same idea, this will be called young age instead. Um, but instead of doing if X is greater than or equal to old age threshold, we're gonna say X is less than or equal to young age threshold. All right, so this should be the same. Once again, 80.83, and then we do this and get 85%. So you can see by using feature engineering, we can actually uh, quite significantly improve the results of the model. So thank you so much for watching. That was some of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.